Well, we've just finished preparing all those onions. I'll put a shot up so that you can have a look. So as you could see, I think it was 10 bags in the end from those onions, all chopped up and frozen. And there were a few to throw away, a few that had gone a brownie color inside. That's one of the effects of white rot, but there were plenty that were in really good order. So, well, that's 10 bags of onions in the freezer for the winter months. And we've got those that we've stored as well for when we fancy a fresh onion. So, well, we've got lots of warm weather in the forecast and I know around the country people are desperate for a bit of rain. Fortunately, we've had a little bit on and off. But today it's, well, a cool breeze on a sunny day. It's rather nice. So I've been looking forward to getting these paths organised and ever since I've been to Danny's, then I've got that wood chip and I'm gonna get that spread around, but I need to get these weeds up first. So you can see what I'm dealing with. It's, well, quite a lot of weed growth. And this is a membrane down, first of all, a membrane, same as I've got on the fruit garden, and then wood chip on top. And well, it just goes to show membrane isn't 100% weed proof, and you just have to keep on top of it. And I find that if you take away the bulk of the plant, then it doesn't very often grow back through the same place. But it is ongoing maintenance. And this tool, the oscillating hoe, is really the solution to clearing it up quickly. You can see how easy it is to remove weed growth from this. So I'm gonna clear all these paths of any weed that I've got, and then fathom out how best to spread that wood chip. But that's the fun bit of it. Right, let's go. Well, that is very easy indeed. And you can pull most of it out of the chip without any problem at all. And then just pick up any that you get with the oscillating hoe. That's what I took out. And it only took me minutes. I need to get in my beds. So, this is my main thoroughfare. And as you can see, you can see the membrane underneath. And I used this, well, it was a horse bedding. And in principle, it seemed like a good idea. The reality of it is that it blows everywhere and therefore you get these ball patches all over your path. So I'm gonna put the wood chip or some of it on top of that. I'm just gonna spread it back into the middle and see if I can anchor it down a bit with this heavier chip. And then it's a case of deciding where the rest of it goes. And there isn't enough here for the whole of the walkway area, but there's enough to get most of the problems solved. And by problems, I mean the high points like this area over here where everything just naturally falls away. But that will tidy this area up and make it very workable indeed. It's always a pleasure to walk around these paths when they're nice, fresh wood chip. So, to the fun bit, spreading this around. And my preference is to use a plastic lawn rake because no risk of piercing the membrane. But if this gets a bit tough, I might have to use this harder edged rake probably use it upside down again not to tear so let's see yeah there's a good amount here I think my priority is that cross path and then I'll hit the high points and we'll see what we've got left I am very surprised how far that went it was about I think four bags four of those sort of green waste bags that we filled. And that seems to have covered pretty much every walkway to a fair level. So brilliant. Thanks, Danny. Pop over and watch his channel on the Grapevine Garden. 
Right, it's given me the motivation to get these nets off and just have a weed through and that'll be this area completely up together. So this will give us a chance to have a look at the celeriac and these are definitely the stronger of the two beds that I've got. And we'll have a look at the size of the roots, see how they're faring. Right, net off. This is a good chance to get that last bit of chippings that overflows the net back onto the path. There we go, brilliant. Right, let's have a look. I'll get you down close and we can see them. Right, let's have a look. So, get these weeds out of the way first so we can see what we're doing. Wow, that one's got quite a deep root. Okay, so I tend to strip these lower leaves, just get them out of the way. They're gonna die off anyway. Put on that one as well. I'll take this one too. Get those out of the way and they smell lovely. And some people say they're really good in soups too. And I think if they're in reasonable sort of quality, not being eaten, then they certainly would have a great flavor. Right, so here we are, here's the root. And you can start to see it developing now. And this is the time when I find that it really puts on a bit of a, a growth spurt. So hopefully that will thicken up. It's not enough there now to make a good meal out of it, but these are well on their way. So I'm gonna just clear everything like I've done with that one. I'll just get the soil back around the root and that'll be one bed done. Here we are, there's that bed finished off. And they look mighty fine when they're all stripped back and cleaned like that. This one just needs to pull in there and a weed. But otherwise, yeah, looking good. Right, on to the next one. I know I've said it before, but raised bed gardening really is the most straightforward gardening. And yeah, you have to put some work into the compost, but having things in a contained space just makes it so much easier. The weeding, a little bit raised off the ground, a little bit easier. And if you spread your plants out, it's just got a fantastic look, which is a bit heartwarming when you're watching your food grow. I've noticed with these celeriac, there's a few problems. So I get down here, you can see this one. It's got some holes in it already. In fact, it's been eaten quite deep. I don't think that's going to do very well. And that one's very similar. And I think when they get that sort of attack, then it's very difficult to recover. These are much better. So, well, we won't win with all of them, but we'll win with some of them. There'll be plenty, I know that. Well, this bed's really not so pretty. So we've got quite a lot of damaged foliage here, which is slug damage. And I'm gonna clean that away with these cabbages. I think it's best to get rid of the decaying leaves because it just doesn't give the slugs a source of food. So I'm gonna remove all that. There's one or two really lacy leaves here, but we'll get it clear. And then this one's gonna come out. This beetroot, which has gone to seed, but it looks like a decent root on it. So I think that'll probably cook up without any problem at all. And a lot of people like the slow cooking method for cooking beetroot. And I have to say, they tasted fabul fabulously. And of course, the one thing that you know when you've done them in a foil in a slow cooker is that nothing's escaped. All the goodness of the vegetables still inside it. Fantastic. Right, I'll get and clean this one up. Shouldn't take too long. Still looking pretty good, really. No great problems in this bed. Just a few weeds and some decaying leaves, which I've moved away. There's lots of lovely beetroot in there, which we need to harvest soon. And the swede, well, they're small. Almost swede are small. That was what I planned, but decent size. Good family meal. And I think over in that one, they'll be considerably larger. But we'll start harvesting those in a month or two's time.
Well, this is an interesting one because this is the Brune, the shallot. And it's interesting because with shallots, you get this sort of leaning over habit and form. So it is difficult to tell whether or not it's white rot that's causing this or whether it's just a natural direction of growth. So, well, now they're nice and firm. And I don't know, there may be one or two that are leaning over a bit more than others, but you'd know because as I showed you in my last video, taking out onions with white rot, they literally, you could take them out, a child could pull them out. And well, these don't seem to have that problem. They seem to be well rooted. So fingers crossed, they'll keep growing for a while. There's no dieback or very little. There's a little bit on there, which may well have been caused by the net, but basically they're still growing fairly strongly. So I'm gonna leave them for a fair old while. And I've had my fill of processing onions and I know Mrs. K has as well. So these can wait. Right, let's get the nets on. Okay, well, let's have a look into this bed. And as you can see, it's peppered. It's completely munched. All the leaves have been heavily chewed upon. And I'm just trying to see if there's any really obvious candidates for that damage. And it's very hard to see anything obvious. Now, Swede do get impacted by leaf beetle. And that may well be what's gone on here, but they will survive. They will continue to grow and the roots will continue to get larger. And I can see one or two really nice ones in there. Look at that. That's a really good sized, what I call a family sized Swede. Well, family for me and Mrs. K. And they're all in and around that size at the moment. They will get a bit bigger. And if I harvest any early ones, then the remaining ones will size up. And you can see, yeah, that's really quite a reasonable size Swede. And there's quite a few of those. So I'm just gonna work through here, pull out any obvious weeds. The predominant weed is mare's tail. And I was trying to think if there's anything good about mare's tail. And I've decided there is. As a weed that is dominant, and it is the dominant weed in my plot, it is incredibly easy to remove. And of course you don't remove the root because it goes down so far. The further you get down, the longer you keep it from sprouting back up. But as a weed that needs to be pulled from a bed, it's probably one of, if not the easiest. So there you are, something good about mare's tail. Right, let's clean this one up. Well, once you've moved away the dead foliage, of which there's a fair amount, then you just start seeing these purple globes everywhere, which is absolutely fabulous. Some real beauties in there, and they're gonna keep growing. I do notice it's dry in there, so we do need to keep that watered. But yeah, these peppered leaves don't seem to be doing too much harm. So, well, that's me pretty much done for today. I'm feeling better about this area. It's one of those areas that whilst I was away, I felt like it got away from me, but it's starting to look quite reasonable now. And these two brassica beds, they are in really good order. So I'm not gonna disturb them at the moment, but yeah, feeling good and great with the paths done. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed today's video. And if you did, why not like and subscribe? And you can get my uploads every Wednesday and every Sunday at 8 p.m. Diochenbar.